Mm, what up, what up? Today in Back to Basics, we're talking about factoring quadratic trinomials. Now, factoring quadratic trinomials is the opposite of FOIL. What's FOIL? Well, first outer inner last, of course. In other words, a binomial times a binomial is B times B. It would be nice if I had the marker selected. B times B, which is B squared. B times negative 2 is negative 2B, or not, negative 2B. Uh, negative 4 times B is negative 4B. Meow. And negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Now I can combine these guys, and I'll write it here. I'll get B squared minus 6B plus 8. Now, this is FOIL. Factoring is the opposite of multiplication. You might remember from my last video, those of you who watch my videos religiously, which is basically just my mom, uh, you know that factoring is the opposite of multiplication. So if I'm gonna factor quadratic trinomials and that's gonna be FOIL, then the opposite of FOIL is basically DFOIL. I like to use a clever little word called sometimes. Now, in our cases, this is a standard form of a quadratic. And everything we do today, we're going to pretend that A is not there. A is 1. So we're not going to worry about A being anything but invisible 1. If I start a quadratic out with x squared, I need to find two numbers, sometimes, two numbers whose sum, which means add, is B, and whose times, which means multiply, is C. Two numbers whose sum is B and whose times is C. Let's believe, make believe that those numbers are five and negative three. Once I come up with those numbers, then my answer is gonna have me put that five and negative three in the parentheses, positive five, negative three, and throw X's in front of them and that's my answer, okay? So that's what we're dealing with here. I'm gonna give you something that looks like x squared plus something x something, or x squared minus something x something. So I have to figure out what two numbers gives me the number in front of x if I add them, and what two numbers gives me c if I multiply them. Once I figure those numbers out, I plug them into those parentheses, dunzo, funzo. Now we're gonna do a bunch because this is very, 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 very important stuff and it's not gonna go away anytime soon. So I have a quadratic trinomial. I have nothing but B squared, so invisible one in front of it. I'm allowed to use sometimes. I need to find two numbers whose sum is eight and whose times is seven. Hmm, what two numbers? Well, first off, if they add up to positive eight and multiply to positive seven, they both have to be positives. So that might help. Two numbers that multiply out to seven and add up to eight. I know one times seven gives me seven and one plus seven gives me eight. My answer is X plus one times X plus seven. The way I check my answers is I'd foil them out and foil them out in your head. X times X, oh, it's supposed to be B. Sorry, it's supposed to be B. B plus one, B plus seven. So B times B is B squared. B times seven is seven B. B time, or one times B is one B. So seven B, one B, eight B, and one times seven is seven. Did it right. Yay me. All right, n squared minus 11n plus 10. Nothing in front of n squared, I'm good as gold. I need two numbers that add up to negative 11 and two numbers that multiply to 10. So in order for that to work, if they're gonna add up to a negative but multiply to a positive, I need a negative and a negative. So let me think. 5 and 2, will negative 5 plus negative 2 give me negative 11? No. Ah, 1 and 10. If I multiply negative 1 to negative 10, I get positive 10. 
negative one plus negative 10 is negative 11. I got it. What letters do I care about? N and N, done. Done. Another one, M, nothing in front of M squared. All right, so I need two numbers whose sum is, there's no number there, uh, invisible one, whose sum is one, two numbers that add up to one, but multiply out to negative 90. Hmm, negative 90. So if they're gonna multiply out to a negative, I'm gonna have a positive and a negative number. If they multiply out to a negative, I'm always gonna have a positive and a negative number. These guys add up to one though, which means whatever two numbers I choose, my larger number has to be the positive because it adds up to one. So let me see, two numbers that add up to one. Oh, how about this? How about 10 and nine? Now, which one gets the negative, 10 or nine? Well, it's nine because if I add these up, positive 10, negative nine, make positive one. If I switch them around, it would be minus one. Let's throw our M's there. Let's throw our M's there. Bada bing, that's my answer. And again, you can foil it in your head. M squared minus nine M plus 10 M is regular M. 10 times negative nine is negative 90. Did it right. Okay, nothing in front of n squared. So I have 4n, so I need two numbers whose sum is 4, whose times is negative 12. So another multiply out to negative 12 again, which means I need to have a positive in here and a negative in there. They add up to a positive, which means whatever numbers I choose, the larger number has to be positive. So you could do four and three, that won't work because four and three make negative, just regular one. I can do six and two because positive six and negative two add up to four. Positive six and negative two multiply out to negative 12. Put your ends right there, donezo. Hmm. I could have sworn I did that one, but I just did one similar to it. No matter. Uh, two numbers whose sum is a negative, whose times is a nine. So if they multiply out to a positive, but add up to a negative, I need a negative and a negative. Why? Because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative plus a negative is a negative. Two numbers that multiply out to nine, add up to negative 10, or nine and one. Put an end there, put an end there, and there you go. It doesn't matter if I put the nine here and the one here, if I put the one there and the nine there, it wouldn't make a difference. The only time that it does matter is if one of these is a positive and one of these is a negative, then you have to be careful where you put your numbers. But here, I don't care about where I put my numbers because they're both negative. The order does not matter. Mm. B squared plus 16B plus 64. I need two numbers whose sum is 16 and whose times is 64. Well, if they add up to a positive and multiply out to a positive, then they're going to be positive and positive. I can handle that. Two numbers that add up to 16 and multiply out to 64 are the same number, 8 and 8. Hmm. Now here's a fun fact. Here's a trick. If you have the same parentheses twice, you can factor that one step further by writing it out once and squaring it. So B plus eight times B plus eight is B plus eight squared. Okay, now it's completely factored. That is my official answer, not that. That's just sloppy. Speaking of sloppy, ugh. Now, I'm looking at that and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought we were going to always pretend that the number in front of here is an invisible one. I did say that. But factor, as you know from a different section that I did, could mean two different things. 
factor could mean reverse distribution, which means I can bring a common factor out of everything. In fact, when I look at this, I notice that I can divide a 5 out of all of these. So let me bring a 5 out. When I divide a 5 out of here, I have invisible 1, n squared is left over, 5 divided by 10, or 10 divided by 5 is 2, n is left over, and if I take a 5 divided from a 20, I have 4. Now I look in here, and I ask myself, can I do sometimes on that? Are there two numbers whose sum is 2 and whose times is 4? And the answer is no. There are no two numbers that add up to 2 and multiply out to positive 4. So in this case, factor just meant pull out a 5. That's it. That's it. Be careful. Now, could I factor twice in the same problem? I guess we'll see. I see a 6 living in front of a V squared. I also see a 66 and a 60, which tells me that there's a 6 in common with all of those guys. So let's pull out the 6. When I pull out the 6, I have V squared and nothing in front of it. I have 11V because 6 taken away or divided from a 66 is an 11. And if I do 60 divided by 6, I get 10. Now I look at what I have left inside. I have V squared. I have positive 11V. I have positive 10. Are there two numbers that add up to 11 and multiply up to 10? I don't know. Did I happen to do a problem like that a couple problems ago? Did I, did I, did I? Oh, oh, I did. There are two numbers that add up to an 11 and multiply out to a 10, one and 10. So let's go back. Let's go back, all the way back. I can factor this and say two numbers that add up to 11 and multiply out to 10 are positive 10 and positive one. These are V's, so I'm gonna throw V's in there. And we can never forget that six that lives out front. So my final answer is that guy right there. So sometimes in a problem, in a single problem, you can factor twice. I just did. Wasn't that so much fun? I love factoring and I don't know what's wrong with me that I love factoring, but I love factoring and you can't judge me. That's God. That's him. Bye.